Hi class, welcome to your lecture on F. Scott Fitzgerald. Before we begin discussing him, I want to go back to poetry and to a link that I put on our course site for an E.E. E. Cummings poem called Me Up at Does. And let me read it to you first. Me up at does out of the floor quietly stare a poisoned mouse still who alive is asking what have I done that you wouldn't have? And what I want you to know about this poem is that it's an example of mimetic poetry, meaning that the content of the poem is not in the shape of, of what the poem is about, but the, the way the poem is on the paper is mimicking what is going on in the poem. So it's different from concrete poetry. What you should see is, when you read it, that the mouse is talking me up at does. So the, the me is under the floorboards looking up and then looking at the humans who have poisoned it. You'll also notice that the personal pronouns in the poem, the I is not capitalized whereas it usually is and the U is capitalized whereas it usually isn't, showing the power is given to the humans and not to the mouse. And so just understand that term and, and be able to answer a question about it on your midterm, if there is one. And now let's move into talking about Fitzgerald. I wanted to begin by making some comparisons between F. Scott Fitzgerald and Ernest Hemingway, who, by the way, only has one M in his name. If you don't learn anything else about Ernest Hemingway, you'll know that. Fitzgerald and Hemingway were born at roughly about the same time. Um, Hemingway is a little bit younger than Fitzgerald, but Fitzgerald died at a very young age. He was outlived by Hemingway. Both of them are from the Midwest. Both had a very weak father and a very strong mother and lived in houses full of sisters longing for that brother relationship, which they found in each other. Both suffered mental illness and struggled with a sense of diminished self-worth, worrying that they weren't good enough anymore. And both were very self-destructive, just at different speeds and in their own ways. Here are some differences. Hemingway was the big brother of the two, even though he was a little bit younger. And he was the hero that Fitzgerald needed. Fitzgerald looked for a hero, found it in Hemingway. And you know that Hemingway, as we've talked about before, had that heroic quality to his person. Fitzgerald's career hit a wall the year that he met Hemingway, so he began writing for magazines to pay bills, and Hemingway absolutely disdained this practice. Uh, Hemingway, whereas Hemingway bounced from wife to wife, Fitzgerald remained loyal to Zelda, his, his wife, and there was a little bit of some tension between Zelda and Hemingway. She loathed him, said he was as phony as a rubber check, and Fitzgerald was a terribly rude drunk and had a low tolerance. Hemingway thought that Zelda encouraged that drinking behavior, and so he didn't like her, and he said that uh, a weekend with... Fitzgerald was nothing compared to going to a bullfight. That's how out of control that he would get when he would drink. Fitzgerald was the second co cousin three times removed of the person who wrote the national anthem. Whatever that means, I've never quite understood that. Uh, he was writing during the aftermath of World War I when beliefs in God, the country, humanity, everything was shaken. So you'll see in some of his stories that were about the 20s, you'll see that the excess, the pursuit of pleasure, like in The Great Gatsby and in Winter Dreams. And then in some of his stories that he wrote um, later on that were about the 30s, you'll see this gloomy aftermath of all of that excess, like, you'll, like in Babylon Revisited. Some dominant influences on Fitzgerald's life were his aspiration to be the best writer that he could be and how he struggled with that and his literature and the relationships that he had with other literary people. His time at Princeton, he never did graduate from Princeton. He wound up joining the military so he could be in World War I. His wife, Zelda, and his addiction to and, and relationship with alcohol. Hemingway Fitzgerald's style, I'm still thinking Hemingway, 
Fitzgerald's style has been described as clear, lyrical, colorful, and witty, and his stories deal with the themes of youth, despair, and the coming of age. That should sound kind of familiar to you from Hemingway. His first novel was The Side of Paradise, and it was about college life. His great success, of course, was The Great Gatsby. And then it was nine years before he published another novel, Tender is the Night. And that was his fourth novel about the American psyche and its decline. Eventually, he started writing short stories for magazines to pay his bills. He wrote 178 short stories and published them in magazines such as the Metropolitan Magazine, where he published Winter Dreams, which is one of our selections for this week, and the Saturday Evening Post, which is where he published Babylon Revisited. Eventually, the magazine fiction market was no longer there for him, so he began writing scripts for films. To pay his bills, he had some pretty intense bills and to, to keep up his lifestyle, but also to take care of his wife, Zelda, who was in a, an asylum in Asheville, actually, Asheville, North Carolina, where she wound up dying when the place burned. And also he had a daughter, Scotty, who was in school, boarding school, so he uh, had to take care of her. And so he really did work hard, you know, with his writing to to make other people in his life comfortable. He died actually before finishing his final novel, which is The Last Tycoon, and he was ridiculed at times by Hemingway, who, who did not believe in, you know, going to writing for magazines to to pay bills. He he just thought he might as well not right if that's the only way you could be published. Babylon Revisited is the story of recovering alcoholics return to Paris after the start of the depression and he is there in Paris to win back his daughter. So in in the title Babylon is Paris and Paris is referred to compared to Babylon and Babylon was a mythical or not a mythical an ancient biblical city which, if you were to look at it on a map today, it would be very near to our present-day Baghdad. Uh, it was uh, famous as a hotbed of sin and vice. The other story, Winter Dreams, is actually a little compressed version of The Great Gatsby. And Fitzgerald wrote this short story while he was drafting The Great Gatsby. And it is uh, about a similar topic in that it's about a self-made man who has dreams of success and in his dreams of success the accomplishment is personifi personified in a rich beautiful woman who belongs to a corrupt society and so Fitzgerald was terrified about not being able to meet the success that he had found in The Great Gatsby and then published a group of stories called The Crack Up, which was a series of articles about his own failure. And Hemingway believed that folks should deal with their own problems in private. And he didn't, uh, didn't agree with Fitzgerald putting his problems out there for everyone to see in such a public fashion. But you'll remember that the short story that Hemingway wrote, The Snows of Kilimanjaro, had some of those same elements in it about a writer who feels like he isn't able to live up to his um, past success. So The Snows of Kilimanjaro is Hemingway's version of Fitzgerald's The Crack Up. He actually mentions Fitzgerald in The Snows of Kilimanjaro and he also mentions him in another group, another writing that he completed called A Movable Feast. There are biographical elements present in many of Fitzgerald's pieces, and so Samuel jo Johnson quotes that he believes the biographical part of literature is what he loves the most. There's a quote from The Last Tycoon that I wanted to share with you. What people are ashamed of usually makes a good story. Remember, that's the, that's the novel that he never was able to publish because he died while he was still writing it. And then he said to his daughter, Scotty, all good writing is swimming underwater and holding your breath, meaning that it requires just total immersion in work and a strenuous exertion for a person to be able to create a written work. Um, you have to work 
really hard for as long as you can to be successful. Fitzgerald said that action is character, and he also said, um, or he alludes to in his story, Winter Dreams, and in his novel, Great Gatsby, uh, he alludes to this Nietzsche quote that in the end, one loves one's desire, not the thing desired. So I want to I want to stop there and just say you know thank you for all of your thoughtful responses on forum posts and for your participation in the class. I really look forward to seeing your presentations and as always you can contact me through email or over the phone if you have any questions. I hope you enjoy your day. Take care and I'll see you next time.